after e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3. Black taking the pawn e4 is the Rubinstein. So knight takes back. We're gonna go through a few moves knight d7, and then knight f6, or bishop d7, bishop c6. In this video, we're gonna start from knight to d7. The idea is to support the knight uh, of g when he goes to f6, so that when knight takes, which is the thematic move, the knight can take back. So now knight f3, and I, after knight g to f6, this has to be taken. So knight takes back, and now white simply plays c3, creating a pawn chain. So the two main moves you're going to go through from now on, from this situation, are going to be c5, typical move to strike the center, and b6 to have a good, decent square to develop this bishop. The light square bishop, as you all know, is often self-sabotaged in the French defense. Let's start from b6. This is fairly popular. White now goes on with knight e5, attacking two crucial squares around the king, and now the black player has to be very careful. There's many different ways to lose a game now. After knight e5, if black were to play a normal move like knight to, uh, like bishop to d6, attacking the knight and developing, bishop b5 wins on the spot. Two ways to block or just to move the king, but that would be just terrible. If black blocks with the knight, then queen f3 attacking the rook, and also attacking f7. And black's best move now is bishop takes knight, of course. There are no other options to stop all of the threats. And now queen takes rook, white is up to exchange. And after the bishop moves from the attack of the pawn, white continues with the crucial bishop to g5. And the knight is pinned and the, the queen is trapped, unless black wants to retreat the bishop, which is possible. But white is going to win after developing the rooks and castling and so on. If black tries to play like f6 to attack the bishop, the bishop goes back to h4. And now after black castles, the queen can take the pawn in a7, that's the best move. And the advantage is very good. So white should win the end game. So in this position, after the bishop check, we went through knight d7, pretty much what should be done then. Uh, queen f3 is the winning move. After the bishop blocks, for instance, knight takes the bishop. So after knight takes back, only way to take back. Now bishop to c6 attacking the rook. And after rook to b8, these moves are all forced. White goes on with the thematic queen a4, stopping the black player from being able to castle. And if black tries the only moves basically to try and, and unpin the knight, like queen e7, maybe play rook d8 or something, then simply this pawn again falls. And after rook to d8, saving the rook since the knight was pinned, queen goes back to a4, putting so much pressure on the diagonal. And after castle, castle, white has achieved a great advantage. One more pawn and the bishop pair for a winning endgame. Another thing that has to be said about this position is that black can't move anything. After a move that looks really normal, like knight f6, you know, start putting the pieces in, a be in better squares, uh, developing the knight and uh, getting the, the file more open for the rook, for example. Rook e1 simply wins the game. The advantage, according to the engine, is something like plus 5 or plus 6 even. Black can't move a thing without it being taken. The rooks cannot go to the other open file, the a file, because of the bishop. Uh, these two pawns on the queen side can't move. The bishop has literally no goal. And yeah, the knight could be moving around, but it wouldn't achieve anything. So, one move ago, if black tries knight to b8, for example, try to get rid of this bishop in order to be able to push the c pawn later in the future, maybe strike the center so to have, to have more open lines, bishop goes to f3. And let's just mention quickly, when it comes to this var variation, that a move like e5, in order to open the center like that doesn't work because of rook e1 putting two attackers and the and pinning the pawn and a move like f6 is just not enough because of bishop f4 and then you're gonna just swap everything go to a fairly easy end game let's try and mention the last thing about this variation after c5 the idea of opening up everything you can take after bishop takes back seems like the black pieces are gaining more mobility and more freedom White goes on with queen to b5, blocking this pawn in b6, ready to kick the bishop away with b4 and then being able to take this pawn and then win thanks to the majority 
uh, on the queen side and especially after the pawn in b6 is gone this will be not only a majority this will be literally three against zero so let's just pick an example of how we will go on for the next couple of moves e5 idea of going to e4 is met by b4 actually bishop to d6 and now bishop e3 putting more pressure well the pawn in b6 cannot be defended twice so after queen to d7 looking for a swap maybe the queen simply takes the pawn and that's how white will win bishop to c7 will be met by queen to b7 for instance and these three pawns are the winners of the game let's make a recap so after d5 d and then knight c3 then pawn takes knight takes knight d7 knight f3 and knight f6 this knight has to be taken knight takes back and now c3 we're going uh, through b6 still so after knight e5 as mentioned now there's a million threats that come after the bishop b5 move that makes white position so much better so we mentioned how a normal move like bishop d6 will just be punished and let's see what happens if black plays immediately the bishop to b7 in fianchetto which looks more natural than the previous move now still this is met by queen a4 check two ways to block of course we're not going to go to bishop c6 because it will be free so knight to d7 a queen cannot block in d7 because there's a knight in a5 or c6 is another way that looks logical let's start from knight to d7 white now continues with bishop to b5 and he's got three pieces attacking the knight in d7 so now two ways that uh, look logical for black to stop this because white has three pieces three pieces attacking the knight so either bishop to c8 or c6 let's start from c6 now white plays knight takes c6 with an attack on the queen bishop takes bishop takes and rook to c8 attacking bishop developing the rook well saving the rook first of all white now plays the incredible move bishop f4 which stops the black player from doubling up the attack on the bishop or even developing this bishop to the only square where it makes sense to go so this diagonal is amazing and there's no way to remove this bishop from f4 a move like g5 is an idea but it's met by bishop e4 attacking the rook and now if rook g8 white will long castle and then play the d5 which wins the game bishop g7 in fact is ignored white continues with d5 and after take take or even bishop takes uh, in a5 this is not a problem because white will have a rook lined up on the queen and it will win if black if black takes the pawn then bishop d6 is the strongest move with the allowing uh, the rook to go and, and checkmate very soon if if the bishop takes the bishop then simply pawn takes and this is also game over so in this position after bishop e5 attacking the rook what happens if f6 then bishop takes f6 it's fine to sacrifice the bishop it's not really a sacrifice because then when the queen takes back we've still got two pieces attacking the knight and also there's an attack on the rook so if black blocks it for instance then we can take the rook so there's no way out of here white will win material at the very least let's make a recap because it's always useful knight c3 pawn takes pawn, um, knight takes knight e7 knight f3 knight f6 this is taken now the knight takes back and after c3 we're going through b6 knight e5 and in this line the bishop goes to b7 so queen a4 check when the knight blocks white goes on with bishop b5 and earlier we went to c6 what happens after bishop to c8 defending the knight like that now bishop to g5 the crucial move bishop e7 cannot be played because knight c6 wins the queen and well i mean white will have to give up two pieces for the queen basically but it's still a, a winning game and instead f6 for instance looks like a fork we're attacking the bishop and the knight but now simply bishop takes and now queen takes back will be met by three pieces attacking the knight so the queen will be abandoning the piece in d7 pawn takes back pawn takes back will be met by knight c6 which again traps the queen so let's go through queen d7 for instance i mean queen f6 now bishop d7 check of course the bishop cannot take back because then queen d7 will finish the game and either the king goes to e7 or d8 the next move will be bishop takes bishop in c8 so let's go through for example king to d8 bishop takes 
and now we are threatening to go to d7 with the queen so rook takes bishop is not possible so after king takes queen d7 check and now king b7 or king b8 either way the game will end soon because uh, queen uh, king b7 is met by queen check and then white will win the rook and if the king had gone to uh, b8 then still this is check the king goes to b7 and then same thing and we will win the rook whereas if king b8 now knight d7 for example will make a fork and win the queen the last line that we're going to look at in this rubinstein with the bishop in b7 fianchetto is after knight takes and then knight d7 knight f3 knight f6 take the knight knight takes back and now c3 bishop i mean pawn to b6 is met by the knight in e5 and now bishop b7 queen a4 check the only thing we haven't seen is c6 now the move to continue now is bishop to a6 attacking the bishop and uh, protecting the bishop doesn't make much sense because after swap for instance there's going to be too much attack on c6 so after bishop takes queen takes in c6 with check uh, the queen cannot protect because of the knight uh, king going to e7 would be met by b3 and if black now plays rook to a8 uh, c8 for example bishop a3 is checkmate forced in three moves so enjoy finding it Black will have to play the most accurate move and the only move, which is knight to d5, which is able to safeguard the king at least for the moment. Although this is a game that it's kind of terrible for black to play. The move now for white is c4, attacking the knight, and nothing really stops bishop a3. If black plays rook c8, for example, that's pointless because white can still take the knight. And yeah, white didn't really checkmate in this specific variation, but it still uh, got a great advantage. Rook takes would be met by white being able to recapture the queen due to the fork. So in this position, one last thing I need to mention of the bishop takes and then queen c6 check. What happens if black blocks with the knight? Knight takes d7. Now the queen cannot take back because of the rook. So after rook to c8, going with an attack on the queen, the queen simply goes back to a4 attacking the bishop again let's look at a few ideas rook to c7 is met by knight to c5 double check and white is completely winning after king e7 knight wins the bishop and if black plays pawn to b5 to block the check again white is completely winning after taking the bishop this time with the queen though same position if instead of rook c7 black plays b5 immediately then knight f6 is the best move check and after queen takes now the queen can take the bishop that was a crucial move to get the queen out of the queen side and now the the queen has uh, quite a few targets and so white will be going to a, a better end game white's got a great advantage by now no move really works here rook to b8 simply met by queen to c6 check and after king to d8 white will castle and then play rook to d1 and go for a swap of pawn in the center that is crucial to annihilate the black weak king the last line i'm going to mention is what happens after the queen simply takes the knight now queen takes bishop and this looks like the best um, variation for black uh, although black is still losing white as a majority on the queen side has got an extra pawn so after a move like bishop d6 and castle the game will continue although white's, white's got an advantage after castle here the game will go on simply by doing a4 and yeah white will have to play solid but uh, it's got much better chances queen to c7 for instance let's just go on a few more moves uh, targeting the pawn in c3 which could be taken later on depending on what white does and also this is putting more attack over h2 white continues with g3 in such a situation there are no weaknesses in the white's territory so there's no compensation for black a move like e5 trying to open the files will be met by take take and now queen to b5 this queen is not afraid of swaps of course we're winning in material so we want to swap let's go on a few more moves rook f to e8 how do we deal with this type of endgame rook to d1 
and the idea eventually will be bishop e3 putting more pressure on these two pawns or a5 as well to try and dismantle these two pawns so that these two in b2 and c3 will be past pawns a move like queen to c5 is met by the winning move rook to d7 and a swap here is not a problem because we will have both rooks in the seventh rank eventually or a move like rook c to d8 trying to control the open file bishop to e3 our rooks are connected and nothing stops white from playing a5 there's no way to kick away the white queen whenever that happens white white can take in b6 so after any move like say h6 then one just white just plays a5 and it's got much more activity in the end game plus extra material